A very warm welcome to the CBS Family Service today, where we always we look forward to a special time in worship and in the Word of God. My name is Mungara Kimashia, serving as your moderator today. And happy new month. We thank God that the Lord has sustained us. Don't we thank God, guys? Yes. Amen. Amen. And we have a great service and worship experience lined up for you today after praise and worship led by our amazing CBS team here on CBS, and we will have lots more, including a special message from our very own Reverend Kwame Rubadiri, and he's no stranger here at CBS, and we will be hearing shortly from him in the course of the service. We welcome all of you listening to us and following this service on Hope FM, and those of you who are watching us on Hope TV, and all our Sitam Church Online channels every Sunday at this local time. Today is also the first Sunday of the month, and as we normally do at Sitam, we will share Holy Communion together during the service. Please ensure that you have the elements, some juice or water, and some bread or crackle. Yeah, you can even use that if you're preparing to join us later. Our hashtag for the day is hashtag help me Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. Our hashtag for the day is hashtag help me Holy Spirit. More about that later in the service. As always, let's get started with the amazing anointed worship team led by the Reverend Chris Bukachi and our guy, Pastor, to come receive. Kevin will be. Amen. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome you, even as Pastor Reverend Kimasha has said, into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We speak life even over the atmosphere, into the digital space. Lord God of the angel armies, have your way. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit, Lord. I will open up inside. You provide the fire, Lord. You provide the fire. Sacrifice. You provide the Holy Spirit. You provide the Spirit. I will open up inside. I will open up inside. You provide the fire. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. I'll provide the sacrifice. Provide the Spirit. You provide the Spirit. I will open up inside. I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. God. Fill me up. Oh, fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up. 
I overflow I wanna run over I wanna run over Hallelujah Hallelujah Come on give Jesus the praise Give Jesus the glory In this new month Oh hallelujah He's good, brother Kevin. Since Jesus came into our hearts, Hallelujah. he's done a new thing. Yeah. Come on,
celebrate your goodness in the land of the living. Oh, Rekantalabo, Serere, Shadarabo. Hallelujah. Katika yote wewe bado Mungu ninajua kushiba na kuona nja katika yote wewe bado Mungu
for the blood and thank you Lord for sending your son Jesus to come and die for us and make it possible for us to be in fellowship and relationship with you we worship you this morning we glorify you for your goodness and for your faithfulness Lord thank you for your love that exceeds every description it is indescribable yes, lord. lord we thank you and we glorify thank you, you that we are the objects of that love thank minister you. to us oh god Hallelujah. everyone that lord is in this service in the name of jesus we pray and believe amen amen, amen. 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 we want to thank the worship team for leading us into the presence of the lord when we want to celebrate the fact that we are god's objects of love and for that reason, while we were oblivious of his existence or the fact that he, he, he was there, he sent his son to come and die for us and reveal himself to us. And this morning, I want to ask you, if you have not prepared your emblems, you were not aware, please quickly do so because we are going to celebrate the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion comprises of a piece of bread and the holy uh, and uh, and juice that reminds us of the beating on the body of Jesus the bread signifies the body of Jesus that was lacerated for our sake that we may be healed yes. that we may see the goodness of the lord but the juice is reminding us of the blood that was shed so that our sins may be atoned for and when we call upon the lord he heals us and he also washes us and gives us fellowship and relationship with him. We want to read the scripture that guides us at this time. And I want to ask my brother, Reverend Kwame, to actually read the passage from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We'll start from verse 23. Thank you, Bishop. Reading from the New International Version. For I received 
from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment to themselves. And this is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we are more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when you are, we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, we should all eat together. As we take time to follow the direction of this scripture, to examine ourselves in remembrance of what Jesus has done for us. Bishop has mentioned that Jesus took on great pain and suffering, suffered a great passion on our behalf for the sacrifice to be paid for our salvation. We do not take that lightly nor do we take lightly the fact that he gives us this opportunity by invitation to come to this sacred meal. If you are not yet a believer in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then you cannot participate and partake in the meaningful uh, uh, foundation of this meal. And we ask that if you do want to consider that, we'll give you an opportunity in prayer after we have taken time to all examine ourselves. And for those of us who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, this is an opportunity for the next minute to just ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts, put us on the right path, put us in a right relationship with the Lord and of course with one another so that the full impact, the potency of this meal, its healing and its restoration might be experienced in our lives today. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we humble ourselves in recognition of all that these emblems represent the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who was beaten with many stripes for our healing. The blood that he shed represented by this juice that speaks of greater things and that speaks of uh, the cleansing of sin from our lives forever. We ask, O oh God, that you will search our hearts. If there is anything that stands in the way of our relationship with you, that stands in the way of our relationship with one another. May it be cleansed from our lives that we may approach this table, partake of this meal in a way that honors you and is a blessing to many others. Father, in the name of Jesus, we also want to pray for those who now recognize that Jesus' great sacrifice was for them as well, that he shed his blood and allowed his body to be beaten for them. And if you are, under the sound of my voice and you recognize that you need the Savior and you acknowledge that his sacrifice includes you, I want you to repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for the sacrifice paid on my behalf. And I thank you that I can receive you by faith this day. May you cleanse me from all my sins and take over my life as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And now we want to ask if you're a believer at home, maybe you're alone, that you prepare, take the cup and take the bread. And if you're a group, one of you who is a believer can serve the others, even as we serve those that are here with us.
the scriptures tell us, the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Take it in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the Lord's body together. On the same night after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is a new covenant, a new agreement between God and man in my blood. Drink all of it together in remembrance of me. Let us all drink together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. Wherever you're joining us and watching us from, would you just want to lift up your hands and worship in thanksgiving to the Lord? Come on, begin to thank God for healing. Thank God for his broken body. Thank God for restoration. Thank God for peace in your life. Thank you that you begin, thank God that you begin this new month with victory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. And we thank you. Blessed be your name. And so our Father and our God, in Jesus' name, we approach your throne of mercy with thanksgiving. We want to thank you because of your broken body. We want to thank you because of your blood. We want to thank you because of every benefit that is ours to receive, O oh God. And so by faith, we appropriate every benefit, hallelujah, of celebrating this Holy Communion upon our lives, upon our families, upon the church, upon yes. the nation, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray, let healing flow like a river in the name of Jesus to every person that is unwell in their bodies, oh God, let them receive your touch in Jesus' name. Let healing flow in this nation, oh God. Father, healing us from corruption, from the immoral living, from turning our hearts and our backs against you, oh God. Father, we pray that you may heal our lives, heal our children, heal our marriages, restore us, our Father and our God, and cause us to rejoice in your goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you that once we were not a people, but now we are children of God. Now we are coheres with you. As Abraham, oh Lord God Almighty, was given those promises, now we can claim them by faith in Jesus' name. Because Jehovah Lord, we have been grafted into you, even through your broken body and the blood that was shed at Calvary. And so we celebrate you, oh God. We thank you that we begin this new month in victory. We thank you that we begin you this new month with healing being our portion in the name of Jesus. With the joy of the Lord being our portion in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Oh, we bless your name. And we ask in the name of Jesus that our love and our commitment for you, oh God, will be like never before. Holy Spirit, that you may help us, that you may journey with us, oh God, all for the glory and honor of your name. And so we thank you, we bless you, and we celebrate you in our lives. And indeed, we can join in saying that since Jesus came into our hearts, Amen. joy has been flooding in our hearts and our lives. Yes. Oh, we thank you, King Jesus. We bless you and we love you. This is our prayer of faith with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Amen. We can our all say Father. a big amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Heavenly Father, we continue in your presence yes. with thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. Your word tells us that you are the one who causes wars to cease. Yes. Lord, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine yes. and even those that are in Russia. And we want to pray that, dear Lord, you will watch over them and keep them. In the name of Jesus, we want to pray that you will keep them focused on you and stayed upon you and that their hearts will be at peace yes. because of what you yes, are doing, Lord O God. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we want to pray that you will stop the war that is yes, taking Lord place. God. And that Lord, because of your goodness and your mercy, Lord, you will do it. You will do it not because we are deserving or they are deserving, but just because of the love that you have shown towards yes. mankind in that you came into the world to reveal yourself. 
Show yourself mighty and strong on behalf of the brethren in the mighty name of Jesus. And we believe that God, we will hear good reports of that war coming to an end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. amen. and amen. 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 God bless you and have a great time in the presence of the Lord as we continue with the service. What a great time of worship this morning. Many thanks to our anointed worship team and to our Deputy Bishop Mbagara for leading us in a time of just celebrating the Holy Communion. And if you've been blessed by this team today, why not say something in the chat section on Facebook, on YouTube, and please do not forget to use our hashtag today, which is hashtag help me Holy Spirit. Once again, if this is your first time with us on CBS, we would like to say welcome and please feel right at home. And we especially want to welcome our friends joining this broadcast in Namibia, in America, in Romania, and East Timor. We mention these countries specifically because we have a growing ministry presence in those countries. But of course, you are always very welcome. Wherever you are in the world, we are delighted to have you with us today. If you haven't done so before, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon for notification and reminders for future videos. And remember, as you interact with our content today, to use and to tweet uh, using our hashtag today, which is hashtag help me Holy Spirit. Why not engage by posting something on Twitter, on Instagram, and let us know your thoughts and comments as you worship with us today. We will be welcoming our speaker for today, Reverend Kwame Rubadiri, in a little while, sharing a great lesson on our theme for the year 2022 here at Sitam, which is radiating his glory. And the focus this time round will be the power that we need to radiate the glory of God. And of course, that power can only come from the blessed Holy Spirit. Now, as we continue, here are some notices that will just explain more about our ministry. So please watch this clip. We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or for those of you streaming live on our Sitam Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on all the Sitam Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before and even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. Planning to get married? We encourage all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly to the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitam Church offices are open between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Please remember that all our assemblies around Kenya are open for in-person services. Seating capacity is limited to not more than two-thirds of the capacity of the sanctuary and all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitam Broadcast Service. Thanks for paying attention to these notices. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Heavenly Father, we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts. We want to thank you that all that we have, all that we will ever own, it's all about you. We are just but stewards of these resources that you have given us. And so, Lord, as we bring to you our tithes, our offerings, 
And even as we offer our very lives to you, O God, we pray that you may bless us in Jesus' name. Bless our businesses. Bless the work of our hands, O God. Yes, we pray. Establish the work of our hands, O God. And may you rebuke the devourer Satan on our behalf. And Lord, may you cause there to be a restoration in our lives in Jesus' name. We want to pray for our economies all over the world. And specifically here in Kenya, O God, we pray that you may remember us in a special way. Those who are trusting you for food, for clothing, for shelter, for daily provisions, even for work to do. We pray that you who is a miracle working God, that you will open doors for them. And so as we stretch forth our hands to give, we pray that you may bless us. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Please watch the following clip that gives you more details on how you can give. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work even in this trying times as we seek to bring the spread of the virus under control. We believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. For the easy management of our finances, we have established a common payment platform for all our giving irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the platforms of M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 933-934. For the account name, please indicate the SITAM assembly you attend and if you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of SITAM, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all the other SETAM people numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. The account name Christ is the Answer Ministries, the Bank Cooperative Bank University Way Branch, account number is 011-280-617-639-06. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. The SWIFT code, KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. That is KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering, and every generous material support. God bless you. In response to the refugee crisis occasioned by the war in Ukraine, CETAM has mobilized its congregation in Bucharest, Romania, to help transport, feed, and accommodate several victims that are fleeing across the border in search of safety and shelter. On behalf of the presiding bishop and the entire leadership team of CETAM, we request for your generous financial contribution towards helping the many families and individuals that need our support during this trying moment for Eastern Europe and the world at large. Contributions can be made via M-Pesa, pay bill number 693371, and the account name to use is Shalom Ukraine. Checks may be drawn in favor of Christ is the Answer Ministries, and direct deposits can be made to Cooperative Bank University Way Branch, account number 011-280-617-639-00. And the SWIFT code is KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. Thank you for your gracious and generous response to this urgent call. As we are reminded in the Gospel according to Matthew, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. It's time now to hear the word of God and our preacher for the day is no stranger to the CBS family service, Reverend Kwame Rubadiri. He's the head of Christian Education and Discipleship Department 
Kiara Tsitam. Now, the title of the sermon today is, I Will Send Him, based on John chapter 16, and I'm convinced you will be wonderfully blessed. Once again, the hashtag today is hashtag help me Holy Spirit. And just before he shares with us, our worship team has a special song for us. Worship team, take it away. Bible tells us that the Word of God is inspired. It is God-breathed. And as we take time now to hear from God, we want the Spirit of God to speak to our hearts. 
We want every part of what God has to say to us to speak to our hearts. We want to thank the worship team, thank our moderator, Reverend Kimashio, for just wonderfully leading us to this moment where we can hear the Word of God. It is my hope that the blessing of this Word will come into your heart and be a blessing. So please join me at the pulpit as we take time to hear what God has to say and how the Spirit of God can speak to every single situation in our lives. The title of the message today is, I Will Send Him. The context is that Jesus is speaking to His disciples just before He is crucified. He's taking time now to encourage them because they feel discouraged. He's talking about dying. He's talking about going away. He's talking about leaving them. But He says, I'm not going to leave you by yourselves. I will send the Comforter. I will send the Holy Spirit. And we want to examine that and unpack what Jesus meant, what it means for us today, and how we can hear the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts. Please join me at the pulpit. Good morning and God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of the family service here at CETA. It is our joy to be able to start this brand new month, the month of March, with a new series. And we know it's going to be a blessing to you. The title of our message is, I Will Send Him. I Will Send Him. And you will know uh, very quickly where we get that text from in a few moments when we look at the word together. Our theme for Christ is the Answer Ministries in 2022 has been radiating the glory of God. It requires more really than just our availability to God. It requires the power of God to form us, to use us as channels for that glory wherever we may be. We're going to be going through a short series in the month of March on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our empowerment. He's the one who gives us the opportunity and the ability to radiate the glory of God. And we're going to look at that very briefly as we look at what is the person or who is the uh, person of the Holy Spirit together today. I want to bring uh, greetings for my family, my beloved wife, Emmy, and our daughters and granddaughter. Thank you for your support and for being a part of CBS family as well. Our text today is John chapter 16 and verse 6. And this is what the Bible says. I'm reading uh, from uh, the amplified version of the Bible. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate or comforter, counselor, helper, strengthener, intercessor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So you can send that to your friends, your neighbors. If I go, I will send him to you. And that is our theme and our title for the Word of God to us today. Now, perhaps you've been to a church service or to a fellowship meeting uh, where you suddenly saw a person or group of people speaking in a language you'd never heard before, jumping up and down and, and jerking or falling on the floor, weeping. And, and somehow this strange behavior was described to you as the Holy Spirit. That was somehow the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you find somebody who comes uh, into a meeting and scrunches up their face, puts their back up, and looks as if something is smelling in the room and saying that, oh, the Lord is speaking to me. And that's supposed to be the Holy Spirit. Well, sadly, many of those things happen, and sometimes it is the Holy Spirit, sometimes it's not. It's unusual, it's spooky behavior, and it has made us as Pentecostals in particular, especially look like sensationalists. It's put us out of touch as it were with reality. This behavior has made it harder to fully engage in the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth and the work of the advocate uh, or comforter as Jesus has referred to uh, in this particular passage. This is the one who Jesus said he would send to the earth after his ascension that he would not leave his disciples by themselves. They'd been with Jesus for three and a half years, and now as he's on the cusp of fulfilling his mission on the earth, he is about to leave, and he tells them he's going to go, but he's not going to leave them without help. And that help is coming from the advocate, whom Jesus will send. That's why our hashtag today 
is help me, Holy Spirit. So make sure that you use us. Now, since the Holy Spirit was to come in the place of our Lord Jesus Christ or sent by the Lord Jesus Christ, we really need to get to know much more about him. Sadly, and this is a direct quote from the late Dr. Miles Monroe, the Holy Spirit is the most misunderstood person on earth and the most misunderstood person in the Trinity. I'll quote that again. The Holy Spirit is the most misunderstood person on earth and the most misunderstood person in the Trinity, end quote. So who is the Holy Spirit? You know, we may, we may be tempted to think of him simply as a force, a wind, a fire, form of a dove. We, we think of him as something or some activity, some event that took place in the stories of the Bible. But the fact is that regardless of what the Holy Spirit has done to represent himself or how he has come into the world, he is not something, but rather someone. He is a person. And as Jesus himself refers to him uh, using an objective pronoun, him, he is a person with full personhood, just like you and I. But more than a person, the Holy Spirit is actually God. He is the third person in the Trinity. Just as much as the Father and Jesus Christ the Son would be considered to be God, the Holy Spirit in the same way, at the very same level, is also God. We see the Holy Spirit active from the very beginning of creation, the very beginning of the Bible. In Genesis uh, chapter uh, 1, verse 1 tells us that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In verse 2, we're told that the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And as we continue through chapter 1, we see the whole exercise of creation. And the Holy Spirit was involved in that even at the point on the sixth day when man was created. The Holy Spirit, uh, we're told that God spoke to himself and said, let us, and we know there's one God, but he was speaking to others who were with him. And I'm sure it was this, the Son and the Holy Spirit who were part of that conversation. Let us create man or make man in our image and in our likeness. Genesis chapter one, verses 26 to 28. And may they rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over the livestock, all the wild animals, over all the creatures along the ground. So God created. The Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of God, has been active throughout the whole narrative of Scripture, throughout the Bible. But here are some credentials of his personhood. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit speaks. In Acts uh, chapter 8, we hear him speak to Philip. He tells Philip, go and join yourself uh, to the person on that chariot. Go and, go and speak to the person who's riding in that chariot. In Acts chapter 10, he speaks to Peter. And he says that three people are coming to you. He, Peter was in Joppa in prayer and uh, waiting on God for the next thing that should happen. And three people came to him just as the Holy Spirit told him. And he had to go uh, to Caesarea, to the house of Cornelius. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. Uh, we are told this in Ephesians chapter 4, verse uh, 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you are sealed to the day of uh, redemption. In other words, it's possible for you to disobey and break the heart of the Holy Spirit. He is just as much a person as you and I. He can be resisted. Stephen tells the Sanhedrin, the most powerful religious group in uh, Israel at that particular time, he tells them directly as he's giving this amazing speech in Acts chapter seven. He says that you resist. Why is it that you and our ancestors continually resist the Holy Spirit? In other words, the Holy Spirit was at work even in the Old Testament. He was at work even during the time when uh, the, the prophets and, and, and all those who were serving God during that time were, uh, were serving and speaking on behalf of God. The Bible is replete with examples of how the Holy Spirit can be obeyed and trusted and walked with, or he can be resisted. But the Holy Spirit also gives direction. He has thoughts, he has a plan, he has ideas about what he wants to do. In Acts chapter 13, verses one to 13, we see that at the church in Antioch, there were prophets, there were teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaean, who had been brought up in the house of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, who later became Paul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, 
the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them to do. The Holy Spirit does all these things because he is a person. He has thoughts, he has a plan, he can speak, he can give direction. Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit's person or throughout the, his explanation to the disciples that this new comforter, this person will come and be with them even after Jesus ascends to heaven. In John chapters 14 to 16, uh, he also gives some insight as to what the Holy Spirit is going to do while he's here on earth after Jesus sends him from heaven. The Holy Spirit comes to fulfill the commission of Jesus Christ through us. Uh, you can tell that to your neighbor, send them a quick uh, WhatsApp message or put it in the chat so there. The Holy Spirit has come to help us fulfill the commission that Jesus left us when he went into heaven. So we're gonna look at three titles given for the Holy Spirit. Uh, there are more than 20 titles given for him in the whole of the Bible. And we're gonna look at how the functions of these titles connected to these titles are vital for our lives here on earth and how they are vital for the establishing of the kingdom of God on the earth and in so doing, helping us to radiate the glory of God. In our text today, these three titles are Advocate, Comforter, and Governor. I'll say that again for the sake of my friends in the US, Advocate, Comforter, and Governor. These are three titles that I want us to look at and how they help us to shape an understanding of what the Holy Spirit is doing not only on the earth and how it is important for us to heed his voice and to allow him to speak to us. Now, in our text today, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as advocate, or in other words, counselor. It's a legal term, and uh, I guess the best way to describe this or to consider it is to think in terms of what does an advocate do? What does a lawyer do? And in this case, an in-house lawyer. Now, we have an in-house lawyer here at CETAM. Uh, his name is uh, uh, Drew uh, Musioka. And uh, in fact, Drew was, was given an award for 2021 being the best in-house uh, lawyer in the industry by a fraternity of his peers. And kudos to you. We salute you, our good friend, uh, Drew. Now, an in-house lawyer is responsible to make sure that we are on the right track with regard to any of the agreements, contracts, uh, any of the things that we want to do in terms of our work and ministry in this country, wherever we have jurisdiction. He, it is also his responsibility if we want to go out beyond the borders of Kenya to give us direction, to give us guidance, to advise us on the best course of action, and also to warn us when we are straying off and what the consequences may be for skirting the law or doing something that might get us into trouble. Now, in the same way, when the Holy Spirit comes to be our advocate, he also comes to speak on our behalf before a holy God. He reminds us that we are dealing with a holy God. We're dealing with a God who is, uh, uh, is completely pure and completely hates sin and will not countenance it, will not allow it to be a part of his presence. So the Spirit of God speaks to God and, say, and basically says to God, I I'm working on her. I I'm dealing with some issues here. Just give me a few more for, for months or a couple of weeks or a couple of days and I know this will be shifted, this will be uh, organized and the person will come into submission to you. An advocate always takes time to make sure that we know what God intends for us to do. In John chapter 15, verse 26 and 27, Jesus says that when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. In other words, he will continually remind you about what I came to do, what Jesus came to do upon the earth, and why it's important for us to keep uh, following him as uh, we must do. He, and you must also testify for you have been with me from the beginning. When the spirit of truth comes in, uh, John chapter 16, verse th uh, 13, he will guide you. The advocate will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak of his own. He will only speak those things of what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. It is in our interests in every encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit that we experience what he wants us to know about our own lives. 
As a good advocate, he will convict us and say, this is where you're wrong. This is when things need to change. And like a good trusted friend, he will guide you in the right direction. He will tell you this is how your behavior needs to change and keep you from making any mistakes that you will likely regret later in your life. He speaks to our hearts and reminds us of our commitment to Jesus Christ as Lord. And as our advocate, your advocate and mine, he reminds you of the parameters of the law. He tells you this is how far you can go and no further. This is what's going to get you in trouble and this is what's going to get you in jail. This is what's going to get you a fine, and this is what's going to uh, uh, put a lot of pressure on your life for several years to come. And in this case, if we look at the law as being the Word of God, the revealed Word of God to us, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, helps us by showing us the consequences of disobedience. The Holy Spirit has spoken many times to your heart and to mine, and He has never forced His will on us. Many times he's just urged us to comply with what God is saying or what he's already said on a matter. And it's up to us. Many times we hear that voice. We hear the Spirit of God prompting us. Maybe it's a feeling. Maybe it's, a, it's, a, it's just a sense of, of, of uh, trepidation that maybe I shouldn't be going here. I shouldn't be doing this. And sometimes it's a direct word. And he says, don't, don't go there. Don't do that. Don't meet with that person. Don't allow yourself to be in the context where you will find yourself in trouble. There are already many, many matters that the Spirit of God speaks to us from the Word of God, from the law that God gives to us. Whether it's marrying a non-believer and you just feel, like, oh, no problem, I'll change them after I get married to them. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians that we should have no dealings. There should be no connection uh, between light and darkness, between uh, the Spirit of God and Belial. If it comes to pursuing an uh, illicit affair. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that be aware, especially young men, be aware of the strange woman. Taking property that is new, not yours, do not steal. Thou shall not steal. Serving idols, the Bible tells us, and God speaks very, very clearly, and the Holy Spirit reminds us of these things continually. You shall have no other gods before me, showing due respect to our parents and to elders, caring for widows and orphans, giving honor to those who, to whom honor is due. All the things that happen in your life and mine, all the issues that we need to know God's direction on an issue, the Spirit of God will guide us if we allow Him to speak to us. Put that in the chat if you like. The Spirit of God will guide me if I allow Him to speak to my heart. The next title is the title Comforter. Now, in, in the Greek uh, New Testament, this is uh, translated from the Greek word parakletos, helper, one who comes alongside to help us in our journey uh, in all the areas and all the times that we are trying our best to become more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he helps us to become successful disciples. The Holy Spirit is to come alongside us and to show us that, yes, the gifts, the talents, the abilities that God has given to us are to be used in a specific direction. We may feel that, oh, the gift is mine. I can use it wherever I want. But the Spirit of God, if you will allow Him, and He will always come through peacefully and quietly like a gentleman and ask, is this really what you want to do? Is this really the direction that you want to go? And if you choose to, he will, He'll allow you. But if you comply, if you and I comply, we will enjoy the full benefits of all the things that God can do through our lives. In John chapter 14, uh, verse uh, 26, he says that the comfort of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. It is his job as our helper to remind us of all the things that Jesus wants us to do and how we can live. When we struggle or falter in this life, it is the Holy Spirit who comes alongside to correct us and to encourage us to hang in there and to strive to become more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. He prompts us, as we're told in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, to walk with Him, to be in step with Him. And in order to do that, we need to be conscious of the direction He wants us to go. We need to be conscious of the words that He's speaking to our lives, and we need to obey. We need to comply. We're told in Galatians 5, 16, so I say to you, Paul speaking to the church in Galatia, Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. 
We're reminded that every day the help of the Holy Spirit comes to build the character of Jesus Christ in our lives. We're reminded that the fruit that is consistent with that character is a result of the Holy Spirit's work within us. Galatians 5, the very same chapter, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. If we allow the Holy Spirit to guide our lives, we will produce fruit consistent with the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're reminded that this help is available to us on a daily basis if we would obey the Lord. So we've looked at two titles, the title of advocate, the title of comforter or helper, and now I want us to look at the title governor. Now, this is not a title found explicitly in the Bible, but the functions of this particular title are consistent with the workings of a kingdom or an empire. And you and I recall that when Jesus arrived on the scene, was ready to start his ministry, he said, behold, the kingdom of God is here or is at hand. And he came to preach this gospel of the kingdom. He came to preach the fact that all that you and I are experiencing is part of God's desire to reclaim his authority, reclaim his control, and to establish his control on the earth and in all of creation. You see, the purpose of a kingdom, or the purpose of a governor, I should say, is to make sure that everyone who is under the auspices of that particular kingdom will espouse and become part of the culture of the king, to pick up the language of the king, the dress habits of that particular kingdom, the history of that kingdom, and above all, to confine themselves and commit themselves to the laws of that kingdom, that they should be faithfully practiced in the colony where the kingdom is established. Now, let me give you a quick example. The nation of Kenya became a colony of Great Britain or the British Empire in July 1920. It took 43 years of Kenya being under the extension or being an extension of the, of the British uh, Empire uh, for us to finally get independence from Great Britain. But there's an interesting model here when you think about the kingdom because what the British Empire was seeking to do, wherever it was established on the face of the earth, not just in Africa, but in Asia, in, in, in parts of the Pacific as well, uh, all the way to Australia and New Zealand, was to establish the authority of the sovereign, of the king or queen, whoever it might have been at that particular time, in that country. So they made sure that if you were born in Australia and that was a colony of uh, part of the British Empire, you spoke English. You behaved in a way and you understood the history of the United Kingdom. It may not have been your history, but you had to learn it. You had to know it. And it had to become a part of your life. In the same way, right here in Kenya, when the British established this place as a colony, we became an extension of the British Empire. We became an extension of the rule of the sovereign of the British uh, Empire at that particular time. That's why we have English as a language of instruction in our schools. That's why we wear English suits, we drink tea. We all thought that we drink tea because um, our good brothers and sisters in Luya land uh, made it famous uh, for us. But tea is something that came from the British. And it is something, all of the customs, all of the ideas, all of the legal systems that guide us, even our constitution, are things that came as a result of our connection to the British kingdom. Now, since the king or the sovereign of any kingdom on the face of the earth, whether it was a, a Greek uh, empire or a Roman empire, since the king or the leader of that particular kingdom or empire cannot physically be present in every part of the domain, then governors must be appointed to ensure the will and intent of the sovereign to be enacted at all times. And that governor is sent by the king He's not elected, he's not voted for. I know we have governors here in Kenya and we're about to elect some of them. Uh, but in the case of a kingdom, which is the structure that God wants us to, to espouse from the word of God, they are not elected, they are appointed specifically, they're handpicked by the king and sent to the colony in order to enact and fulfill the will and intent of the sovereign. 
in the same way, the Spirit of God was sent. Jesus said, I will send him to you. Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, says, I will send him to you. And he will teach you all. He'll guide you into all things. He will teach you uh, all the truth. He will make sure that you understand what the kingdom of God is all about. He will help you understand what it takes to glorify God and to radiate his glory. He'll help you to live a life of example and glory to God because he has been sent from the Father to make sure that the Father's will and his intent is established right here on the earth. When we pray to our Father in heaven, we rejoice and say, hallowed, glorious be your holy name. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom be established, not just in my life, but in my entire community over the face of this earth. And let your will, your intention be done, not just in heaven, but here on the earth as well. A kingdom by definition must expand itself to showcase the power and the glory of its king. A kingdom that is uh, shrinking or insular is going to lose influence very, very quickly and, and, and its subjects will be, be, be rife and victims likely for another stronger, bigger king. So a kingdom must expand. It must showcase its power and the glory of its king. It must replicate itself in every single colony. That's really what colonization is all about. In other words, the Holy Spirit is here on the earth to dramatically and purposefully create a colony of heaven on earth, that everything to do with earth is just as it should be in heaven. And that takes time. Most kingdoms, as they spread, of course, met opposition and had to work hard to, uh, to, to, to uh, apply their, their rule, to apply their authority. A kingdom must make subjects for itself and for its king. Every region in which it controls must make sure that the people who are there become followers of the rule and intent of the king. The Holy Spirit, as governor, has this singular job to see that the kingdom of God is expanded over the face of the earth. The Holy Spirit is also given this singular job that he replicates people who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, who look just like him, who behave just like him all over the earth. It is the Holy Spirit's job to make us subjects of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, wherever we may be. The Holy Spirit is impacting the domain, this earth, with God's will, God's purpose, God's intentions, ensuring that we understand God's law, the Bible, the Word of God. We're told in John chapter 14, verse 6, that I will ask the Father and He will give you another advocate to help you and He will be with you forever. Verse 26 says that this advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you. He will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said to you. It is the Holy Spirit's job to make sure that we not only understand the Bible correctly, but that we live by it and that it changes and shapes our lives. It is in our interest to cooperate with the Spirit of God. You didn't hear me in Romania or Namibia. It is in our interests to obey and to hear the word of the Spirit of God on a regular basis because it is through us that God is going to transform Romania. It is through us that God is going to transform Namibia. It is through us and the working of the Holy Spirit that the rest of the world will come under the authority of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords as we allow ourselves to come under his authority as well because we are here to represent the king. You can put that in the chat. I am here to represent the king of kings and the Holy Spirit gives me the power to do just that. A professor of New Testament theology and a senior research fellow at the University of Oxford, very well known, Professor N.T. Wright, wrote these words once. Those in whom the Holy Spirit comes to live our God's new temple. They are individually, corporately, places where heaven meets earth. Let me just say that again, for those of you who perhaps didn't hear this before, but you can see it on your screen. 
Those in whom the Spirit comes to live are God's new temple. They are individually and corporately places where heaven and earth meet. Can that be said of your life and mine? Can that be said of our allowing the Holy Spirit to take hold of our lives? That in my life and in my interactions with the rest of community, the rest of life, heaven and earth are meeting. That when somebody sees you, somebody has an interaction with you, they can say, wow, that must be what it's like to be in heaven. Or that's what the power of heaven is all about. That when they have an interaction with you and I, they say to themselves, I want to have what you have. I want the spirit of God that's at work in you to be at work in me. It is our responsibility as the spirit of God takes residence in our lives. As we are reminded in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter six, chapter 6, verse 19, do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit who is at work within you? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God in your, with your body. God wants us to, or God wants to make his appeal to the rest of the world through us. We are the ones who hold the Holy Spirit. We, uh, uh, in, in, in many ways, we encapsulate him. We allow him to take over our whole being. And if we are not truly representing or allowing the Spirit of God to shine through our lives and radiate the glory of God in and through our lives, we are not succeeding in helping fulfill the mission of Jesus Christ on the earth to bring this gospel of the kingdom to every living soul. The transformation that God wants to create through us is a result of our cooperating with the Holy Spirit. And it is my hope and desire that you will invite the Holy Spirit to help you. That's our hashtag today, help me Holy Spirit. Invite him to help you by inviting him to fill your life today. I believe that the Spirit of God who has been present with us right through this service from the time that we began worship, there's a wonderful sense of the presence of God, is not only filling your life, but filling your home, filling the circumstances. And if you will allow Him, if you will just submit to the Spirit of God and allow Him to take over in your life and invite Him and say, Spirit of God, come and take control of this situation. I'm not, I don't understand how this, this, this matter is affecting my life or why my children are wayward or why I'm struggling in this, in this particular area, please come and take control of my life. I want to pray with you on those issues and on that subject in a few moments. I want you to invite the Holy Spirit, wherever you might be. You may be confused about something and not sure what to do next about it. Invite him to speak wisdom to your life, to give purpose to what you're going through and to show you and shape you to respond to the issues that you are facing. That's what he came to help us to do. I want you to invite the Holy Spirit to give you the power that you and I need to overcome all the opposition in the world today. When Jesus said that I am sending the uh, comforter, I'm sending the advocate to you to be with you and to be in you, he was basically saying that all the things that you saw me go through and had victory over, you can do. In fact, Jesus went a step further. He said that everything you saw me do on this earth, you will do and even greater things because I go to the Father. And the reason he said that is because he knew he was sending power. I say that again for some of you who missed what I just said. Jesus knew that he was sending some serious power to help us to live a life that not only glorifies him, but does things that are even beyond what we have ever imagined. Let's pray together because I know that there are many of you who are feeling the sense as you invite the Spirit of God into your space, into your home, into your life, that He is shaping your situation. He's shaping your lives and He's speaking to your heart as the wonderful worship team sang for us earlier on. Invite the Spirit of God to speak to your heart and through your heart to speak to your situation and transform that situation into a space for the kingdom of God to be established. Let people walk into your house and say, there's something amazing about this place. There's, there's a peace here. There's a control. There's a move of God in this place. Let people walk into your office and just suddenly feel like a healing has taken place because you've given room for the Holy Spirit to work through your circumstances. 
Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are gathered in your presence this morning, welcoming your Holy Spirit, the Spirit that you'd send, you said you would send into the world to not only be our friend, to be our, our counselor, to be our advocate, but also to be a governor, to guide us, to train us to live for you and like you. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you into every home, into every life of all those who are under the sound of my voice. We welcome you to take charge. We welcome you to take control of every life. We welcome you to take control of every situation. We welcome you, oh God, to release your word over everything that may be taking place in my brother or sister's life. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you. Even as Jesus sent you, we want you to come and take control. And so, dear friends, just say in your hearts or say with your lips, come, Holy Spirit, come and take over in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May your hearts and your homes, every circumstance you're found in, be open to the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent him to you and to me. May our lives be the better for it. God bless you. Amen. Handing over now to our, our moderator, the Reverend Kimasha. Amen. Thank you so much, Rev. It's been an absolute pleasure. What an anointed pleasure. word. We give glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. You're blessed. Thank you, sir. Amen. amen. Thank you so much. What a blessing to have you join us in the service today. We are always blessed to have you share your experience and your thoughts after worshiping with us today. And so please share the link for today's service online with someone who may have missed it send them the link from our online channels on YouTube and Facebook. And so we look forward to seeing you during the week on Tuesday. Join us on Hope FM, Hope TV, Sitam Church Online Facebook and YouTube channels at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussions. Discussion where any question that you have concerning the subject that Reverend Kwame has just handled will be tackled. And join us again on Wednesday when we will just invite you for a time of prayer at 6 p.m. This will be coming to you live on Hope FM, Hope TV, and our Sitam Church Online social media platforms. Our pastors will be praying for your requests. So please send them in early, and I can assure you we'll lift them up to the Lord, and God is going to do an amazing thing in your life. So please keep tweeting, keep posting, share your feedback on today's message, and our hashtag, kindly remember, is hashtag help me Holy Spirit. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior today, please let us know by contacting the numbers that are appearing on your screen right now. Just drop a WhatsApp message and someone will get in touch with you in the course of the week. We will be sure just to call you and to pray with you. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining us. We are glad to have you and how we pray that the Lord will just keep blessing your week. And now just wherever you are, stretch forth your hands as I give us the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace both now and forevermore. God bless you. See you next week.